be able to separate us by the love of God in Christ Jesus of Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and rose again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Amen. Please sit. We have words of remembrance by Tracy Wickham. and I wish to thank you guys for coming and for being with us as we go through this time of grief. Today I'm forced to say goodbye to my grandmother, Eudine Hurdle. I'm proud to have been able to call Eudine Hurdle, Mrs. Williams, an inside joke between her and I, my grandmother. To have, experienced a, to, to have experienced living with her, keeping her company, and to love and be loved by her. Seeing firsthand her selfless example of being a good wife, in spite of the circumstances she and my grandfather faced for a few years, demonstrated what it means to love and cherish and to support your significant other. She was always present and a part of our lives and the lives of all she hold dear. <clears throat> Often she went outside of her comfort zone to meet a need or to provide for others, a sentiment that my godmother Gerda expressed when I asked her what she remembered most about my gran. She was as loving as she was strict someone dependable, who valued her friendships and her relationships. She loved baking and cooking and babysitting. She liked to feed you and get you fat with all that food and snacks, a memory fondly expressed by one of her other granddaughters. She was a pillar. She held us together is what my uncle, Dark Man Hurdle, wants us to remember most about my gran. As short as she was, in fact, the shortest of a family of five, she made sure peace reigned in her house. Picture it. One house, five boys and Clarence, my granddad. Imagine the fights she had to break up and the peace she had to enforce to run a house full with five meals, all of different personalities and temperaments. This is a tearful memory which her youngest son now holds dear. Frischton wishes us to, wishes to share today that he looked forward to Grand's soup days. Mondays and Fridays were her, fruit, were her days for preparing soup for your granddad, Trace, a pastime that I look forward to with anticipation. Have I ever told you that she was as quick as she was short? that she would smoke the guys along the beach as they raced and played along the seashore? Or have you heard about the time she left to go to Canada to live with her sister Pauline and her, and his, and her son Stephen, and she got cold feet because she missed her boys, her Bajan boys? Let me tell you, Trace, your gran was the start of many conversations Free and I had about my grandmother over the years leading up to the day's service. 
I remember mom being the epitome of the story of the mother chick. Before Peter, who is my youngest brother, went to school, mom would walk the four, the four of us boys to school and return to Calacas to walk back to Worthing View from St. Lawrence School. I never saw her show a sign of displeasure as she did this daily for us boys. She was as fierce as she was quiet, an aptitude she had to master to protect us from each other disposition. But would get a rude awakening when she transformed to a warrior ready to defend and protect her family and friends. I remember mom being a welcoming and loving person, one who no matter the conversation would inquire about my well-being. Both Freeston and Peter would say, Mom got on to the matter, sorry, Mom got on to the matter of hand and the purpose for the call, and she would always ask about caring. Remember to me for her, you hear? But what I wish to hold on to, and what endeared me most to her, was the call I got to request for the help to lead her to the Lord. This was a conversation that stands out to me the most. It was my pleasure and it brought me the greatest joy to be able to lead my mother-in-law into the joy of salvation with our Lord and Savior. 66 years of marriage and still nothing but praise and high words are the sentiments my grandfather had to share for his dearly departed life partner. And my grand, but nothing to bring the house down. He recounted his last Sunday with her by saying this, count the days, now she has left, but God knows best. To them for me here, she would ask, have you heard from my other grandchildren? I hope that, okay. Another fond memory I have is when we live together, she would put up with the falls, as the seniors will call it. Sunset and Grand would have the house pick a blink twice. I would always pull the, grandfather, the granddaughter card door and get her to leave at least the bedroom window open until the moon come over. Oh, she hated to see the moon when she slept. A fact that I grew to know and understand about her. My final thoughts on my grandmother as I close would be to hear her saying I love you too. Words I never heard her say to anyone else, not even my grandfather. These are the three words I got used to hearing and looking forward to hearing at the end of all of our conversations that we would have had over the last five months of her life. We never got to say a proper goodbye or that you never got your birthday hug from your great grandson. I pray that you rise to meet the Lord when he does return to take us home to live with him in the ceaseless ages of eternity. I love you, Gran, and may you rest in peace. Anointed with the Holy Spirit, let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that He may raise us to perfection in the of the saints. Of grace and glory, we will thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on this pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until by your call, we are reunited with two, two, three.
we extend a warm welcome to all of you who have come to the parish church of Christ Church as we offer this service in thanksgiving for the life of our sister Eudine. We know that death is always a pain for the experience. And so we remember you in our prayers and we pray that this service, let us pray. Almighty Father, in your Son Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our lives. That we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life eternal through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Please sit. The first reading from the book of Romans. from the word of God written in Romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39 who will separate us from the love of Christ will hardship or destroy all day long we are accounted as sure than conquerors th th through him who, who loved us for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor any nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall remain sitting for the Psalm number 23. Good afternoon. I'll be reading from St. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, 
there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where, I how can we know the way? Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Nine. I speak to you in the name of God, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the reading from Romans chapter 8, which we use as the first reading, is a very interesting chapter. In this chapter, Paul compares and contrasts life in the spirit and life according to the flesh. When Paul speaks about life according to the flesh, he's not referring to human flesh. But the flesh refers to anything that is evil, anything that is sinful. And Paul says, those who live according to the flesh live what we may call a life of misery and a sinful life. And so Paul invites us to live in the spirit. And to live in the spirit, 
speaks about living a righteous life, a life of meaning, and a life in which we endeavor to please God in all that we do. And Paul knew about the difficulties we meet in our lives. And in this same chapter, Paul says, what we now experience cannot be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in Christ. And because of that faith, Paul says in the same chapter, all things work for good to those who love the Lord. But then Paul concludes this chapter with a statement of faith about the hope of the Christian. And he addresses those persons who live in the spirit. And he asks the question, who can separate us from the love of God? And Paul says, look, that the death nor life, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so, in speaking to those who live in the spirit, Paul tells them and Paul tells us that we who live in the spirit, we who live the righteous life, that no matter what we meet in our lives, there's nothing in our creation that can separate us from the love of God. That at every moment in our lives, God's love comes to us. Whatever experience, how difficult or bad it might be, Paul says, God still loves you. God still loves all. And therefore he says, there's nothing in our creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In many instances, lots of people choose this lesson at funerals. And uh, it is chosen because it brings a, a message of hope and comfort. It is chosen because in these circumstances when we experience loss and when we may go through agony in our lives, we always need a word of comfort. And so Romans chapter 8 verse 35 through to verse 9 which we use this afternoon, it does that. It brings comfort to us. It reminds us that all is not lost. And it points to a glory to come. What we suffer now cannot be compared to the glory that is to be revealed in Christ. Death and the death of our sister, Eudine, it reminds us of the sufferings, the, the disappointments, and the times of grief and sorrow which we go through in our lives. All of us who are present this afternoon most of us have gone through some kind of disturbance in our lives most of us present 
have endured disappointments in our lives. Most of us present know what it means to be disappointed, to be sad, and to experience loss. No one is immune from these negative experiences. And because of our faith in God, we were able to overcome what you may call the negative experiences of life. And we were able to do it because of our faith in the risen Christ, a faith that tells us that good outshines what is bad. A faith that tells us light conquers darkness. A faith that tells us that because we share in the risen life of Christ, all will be well. And so we, we are able to say as Christians, at every moment, we are able to sing, it is well with my soul. Why? Because of the strength we get from God and because of the knowledge that there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. And no matter what we go through in life, the Christian can say, it is well, it is well. And so as we come to say farewell to our sister Eudine this afternoon, as family, this might be a difficult time for you. As family, you will experience loss. Why? Because death not only uh, separates us from our loved ones, but death leaves a void which cannot be filled. That void remains. And because our sister was unique, she cannot be replaced. And so the void remains all the time. But we are people of faith. We believe that beyond death, there's life. And because of our faith in the risen Christ, in the midst of our sorrow and grief this afternoon, we can rejoice in the love of God. A love that is constant, a love that does not change, a love that endures all things and believes all things. And so we thank God for the life of Yudin, as the Yudin just said, she lived a, a full life. And uh, as a result of that, we thank God for our sister's life, for all the good she did for her family and friends. Thank God for the love she showed to them. And all we can do now is to say farewell and commit our sister into God's care and God's keeping. And we pray that God will grant her a place in his kingdom. May she rest in peace. Amen. Please stand. Page five in the bootlet as we repeat the faith of the church. I believe in God.
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. the body and the life everlasting amen we shall remain standing for the praise we pray for those who mourn for the family of our sister pray that God will strengthen you as we prepare to say farewell to the physical body of our sister we commemorate all those who have died, especially our sister Eudine. Pray that God will grant her a place in his kingdom. And so with confidence, we pray to God, our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the day for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace and the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We commend all people to your unfailing love that in them your way may be fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that with them we may enjoy everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, Father of all, we pray to you for our sister, Eudine, at this time. And for all those who we love but see no longer, grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shed upon them. May she and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, 
and is now alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in thee, hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to leave the church for the burial, we shall sing the hymn 455, 455.
I heard a voice from everything saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, it blossoms, and then it widows. Like a shadow, it flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by all things, in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Eudine, and we commit the body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your well beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Eudine and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those before to hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departing through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up is continuous upon her and give her peace now and forever.
De hem deze land dat het verder dan die.
Lake River. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. We shall sing the day thou gave his Lord his ending. <laughs>
Kailan? If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard of them The streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here are through there's a place up there for people like you Please. 